Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it's time for my client Michelle's vlog, and we started the week off with a floor press. Now, funny enough, and there's always some joking with it, uh, this is her second time doing this Mac. She did it on the first one, and it was really clean, but she accidentally recorded it in slow motion, and she's like, I went ahead and retook it because of that. So it was actually smoother than this one. Uh, she's done that a few times, and we just have a laugh about it. Uh, we make some jokes about it and move forward. I always joke that I make, make music videos out of it, and, and I did out of that one, <laughs> just, just for our amusement. But uh, afterwards, for supplemental work, we do uh, pause benching, right? We do sets of 10 on the pause bench afterwards. I will usually do some incline work, right? And then we do lots of Latin tricep work for her. So the idea here is, uh, again, even though we always push her tricep stuff, her triceps are crazy strong. Uh, they are not even close to her weak link in the bench. Uh, her triceps are strong enough to support a much stronger bench than we currently have. So we just keep working our pecs, which is why they take a high priority. You know, and the topic will come up, well, why do you keep training her triceps then? It's like, well, number one, we do it at the end. Number two, I don't want to lose the tricep strength that we have because maybe her chest will catch up to it one day, right? So there you see the JM presses. Then, of course, we do pull-ups and we do rows. Uh, again, she's gotten quite proficient at pull-ups. We're up to where she can now do sets of 10 for full range of motion. Part of that is coming down a weight class. Uh, so we're, we're, I'm actually really happy with her last meet. She was coming in hoping to get a bunch of meat PRs. And I reminded her, you are walking around 17 pounds lighter. The fact that we can even be it, right in the same little range of your, your previous meet uh, is fantastic, especially as a drug-free lifter. Like, we've retained 99% of your strength while losing 17 pounds. Okay, now we go up from here. You know, now we go up from here. Now, this is her doing chins. I have some pull-ups for a full range of motion. She worked these in. I guess it's a separate set. Uh, but I went ahead and just worked those into the block. Her pull-ups, she's been doing the full range of motion. So something we'll, we'll work on on the chins for her is uh, need a reminder. If we're going to do these, we need full range of motion. You know, otherwise we're not getting the bicep stimulus that we really want, and and that's okay. Uh, again, these things happen. But uh, again, I always show the stuff when when those things happen, even even in blogs. I like I like people to see it just to show that you know uh, we don't always think of these things when we're doing lifts uh, as lifters. And even coach lifters, you know, after the fact, will you know, they'll see stuff like that, and, and that's okay. Um, and I think what people need to remember, you're not going to do everything totally perfect all the time. You know, and this is, again, stuff that we don't always think about. You know, we just get in and train, and, and this is one beautiful reason of why filming is so valuable. And it's something I've noticed over the years. Uh, usually people who don't film any of their lifts man, that's some of the worst lifting you'll ever see unless they just have great body awareness or they've been coached through a lot of stuff. Uh, and it's, it's because filming gives us so much, right? It lets, us, it lets us really critique what it is that we're doing. It lets us critique what we're doing and it lets us be able to look at it after the fact objectively. And that's one reason I'm such a massive fan of filming. This is why I don't like it when people abuse filming in the gym and it, and it causes some, some gyms or other places to, to not like filming because it hurts everybody. Because we need to be able to film, right? Unless you have a coach in person watching every set that you do, filming is so valuable. Uh, we're pretty happy with that squat too. You guys saw the smile on her face. That was a real good squat. We were happy with that this week. All right, so what's going on with the lower body? We're hammering, we're hammering hypertrophy. A lot of leg pressing, a lot of single leg exercises. Why? Because she's squatting with a narrower stance and deeper now, which we adjusted to for her to be able to compete at a higher level uh, because she was struggling with depth with her old stance. I'm like, look, let's bring it in. Let's, let's find the one where you can get depth. But now her quads are, are a limiting factor in her squats. And because of that, we're trying to do a lot of quad hypertrophy work. So I've got her on lower days. I've got her both leg pressing and doing uh, split squats. You know, then obviously her dynamic days, we, we just do uh, high sets of low reps on back squats. So again, the quad volume is very, very, very high because we've got to bring those legs up, right? Those quads that you're looking at there, they got to be bigger. She wants to get to a 315 squat one day. 
Okay. We're going to have to have more quads. And it, and it is that simple. Size raises your strength ceiling. And when we know her quads are limiting, limiting her, her squat, we've got to bring them up. And that takes time. You know, that's that's one of those things where people are like, well, I am. If I've got a weak link and I am training it, I'm like, are you a novice lifter? And they're like, no, you've been lifting for years. Well, it takes a hell of a long time to bring up weak links. And you may not see it for a long time. You know, a lot of times people are like, but I've worked on this for six months and the big lifts have barely budged and I feel like I've done this hypertrophy. I'm like, okay, that's great. Six months, give it 12 months. Building new lean tissue is a long-term process that requires consistency. And people, I, mean, I think it's because people are so used to stuff coming so easy in that first year that, you know, you can get so much stuff wrong and still make great progress. Okay? You really can. And then things stall, and it's like, yeah, because now, now it takes real work to build lean tissue, and it's going to take time and consistency. You're going to do 20 times as much work for every pound of muscle as you had to do, do for it, you know, in that first year. You just are. And it's going to take time. It takes a long time to lay down new muscle tissue, but the beauty of it is, is that it stays a long time. Once it's there, it's largely there. So usually it's, it's a point out to people, when you see detraining happen, it's not really uh, myofibular growth that they lost in any short period of time. It's usually just uh, glycogen. And then sarcoplasmic growth comes next. But that, that contractile fiber hypertrophy stays a really long time. And some of it is permanent, like meaning there have been people who... Uh, they quit lifting for a few years, but if they really spent some years building that stuff, they still have more muscle and strength than when they started, even if they don't train anymore. It, you, it seems like it, you almost don't really lose it in the long term. It's just something to be aware of. Uh, so other supplemental work, obviously, hamstrings, glutes, and all that matters. So we're doing glute ham raises, and we do these uh, band pull-throughs. Again, the band pull-throughs have great carryover to our weak link on the deadlift, which is right at the lockouts. And of course, it gets us a lot of blood flow and pop to the whole posterior chain and erectors, which we need. And then we finish the week up with speed work, uh, dynamic effort benching. We do uh, nine triples, three sets wide, three sets medium, three sets close, uh, with really, really short breaks, less than a minute between sets. Uh, and then we repeat the same supplemental work as the other day. And then for dynamic lower, we just do normal back squats uh, with a moderate weight, right, for doubles. And just uh, explode with them as hard as we can. High sets. And we do speed pulls. And then we do similar supplemental work. And it's pretty much her training week. And then she does a lot of conditioning and GPP on her own. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.